Brownian Motion in Cells, a biological science video by Joe, Adam, Katie, and Sophia. Okay, so Brownian motion is a random movement of microscopic particles suspended in liquids or gases resulting from the impact of molecules with the surrounding medium. So essentially, Brownian motion is any motion resulting from impact with other particles. So if we had this green skittle as a particle in water collide with this purple skittle and then bounce off and collide with this purple skittle and then bounce off that way, the purple skittles would react like this by colliding this way and this way. So the movement of the purple skittles is Brownian motion because it's movement caused by the impact of another particle. A common example of Brownian motion is dropping dye into a glass of water. So as you can see, the red dye particles are interacting and colliding with the water molecules. And although this process looks relatively slow, it is the collisions are happening very, very rapidly. So if we didn't know about the concept of Brownian motion, we would expect the red dye particles to just fall straight down, so kind of like this. But in reality, the red dye particles would actually collide with the water particles. So they would go, follow the arrows a little bit, and eventually it would result in uniform dispersal. So here's your average E. coli cell. It has a width of one micrometer and a length of two micrometers. And the volume is about one micrometer cubed, which it has uh, one times 10 to the negative 15 the liters of intracellular fluid. If we remove the cellular contents and we're just examining enzyme and substrate, we have a one to one molar ratio. Then our enzyme and substrate will find each other interact, and the reaction will proceed. If we alter the concentration so that we have five enzymes for every one substrate, then it will be more likely that the substrate and the enzyme will find each other and interact. Likewise, if we have five enzyme, or five substrates for every one enzyme, then it will also increase the, the rate at which it, the uh, substrate and enzyme interact with each other. However, the reaction would be slower because there's uh, more substrate than there is enzyme. Okay. Now tying in Brownian motion and the presence of ribosomes, plasmids, and DNA in the E. coli cell, you can see how the interactions between enzymes and substrates would be impeded by the presence of all these extra molecules. As the Brownian motion showed us earlier, the enzyme and substrate interactions would be impacted through the presence of these extra molecules, but eventually they would find their way to each other and cause reactions. However, when you have higher concentrations of these enzymes and substrates, they're much more easily available to interact with each other. And although there is still Brownian motion and they would randomly interact with the ribosomes, DNA, and plasmids, they would eventually find their way to each other and cause reactions at a much higher rate with higher concentrations. In conclusion, we would like to thank BioNumbers, Miriam Webster, Albert Einstein, Dr. Saha, President Reevely, Mom, Millington 150, and of course Wrigley Jr. and Nestle. Thank you for watching.